exciting things. Ladies, we're going to be meeting on a Saturday instead of a Tuesday. So um, a little bit of a, a change, but I believe it's going to be a good change and enable people who may not have been able to come on the Tuesdays to be a part. Yes, I already hear the, the excitement. And so this is going to be a good time for us to get together. I believe that um, every... Uh, opportunity for us to get together is important, but when we have times for the men to come together and, and sharpen themselves in, in the, their position in the body of Christ, it's vital. And as well for us ladies to come together and just to, to impart into each other of the Word of God and of the, the inspiration that He brings to us. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Today, I want to talk to you about the process of faith. And we're here in a Faith Builders Church, and we're going to talk about things that you've probably already heard and that you may know. But we want to allow the Holy Spirit to bring clarity to us and to help us fine-tune. And so I want you to release your faith with me for that revealing of His work in our, our service today. Father, we just come to you and we request that the Holy Spirit would bring clarity and understanding and reveal to us from your word. Let this be a time where the teaching gift and manifestation of the Holy Spirit is in maximum operation. Father, that we would increase in the knowledge of who we are in Christ Jesus and how to operate that which you have placed within your kingdom for us. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible tells us many times, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, as well as Romans chapter 1 verse 17, Galatians 3.11 and Hebrews 10.38 all hold that statement, the just shall live by faith. I know you wanted to write all those down, right? Habakkuk 2.4. Habakkuk 2.4 says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. We're just going to let the Word of God show us all of them. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 1 verse 17 for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. How important is it that God placed it three different, four different times? in Three in the New Testament, four different times total in His Word. Hallelujah. The just shall live by his faith, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And then finally, Hebrews 10. Thirty-eight. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So three different times in the New Testament, four different times total in the Word of God, He has made this declaration, the just shall live by His faith. So our faith is vital to us. It is by faith on our part that we're saved. His grace has extended the salvation to us. But there are, although He has made that salvation available, there are a lot of people who have never entered by faith and received that salvation which is available. Every aspect of our life is touched and affected by what we believe. And what we believe affects every aspect of our life. And so it's important for us to have our faith operating at uh, maximum effectiveness, at, at the full efficiency that's available to us. And so I want to talk to you about some, some specific areas, and I'm going to... I'm not necessarily going to define faith for us. I'm not necessarily going to um, uh, talk about um, uh, this is what faith is or describe what it looks like necessarily in action. But what I want to talk to you about is some, some specific aspects on our part of working this process of faith. 
So if I were to have to describe this, this is how I, I came to this, this teaching, is to bring it to you as if I was trying to teach someone, this is how you believe God for something. This is how you receive something from God. Trying to make it in steps or in, in easily access or easily operative uh, actions that we can take. And the first thing that we've got to do if we're going to believe God for something is we've got to find his will on it because you can't believe for God for something he hasn't promised you. You can't use Bible faith for something that's not in the Bible. You can't use the faith of God for something God doesn't want you to have. We had a person who attended our church one time and they were learning the aspects of, of faith and decided they wanted to marry my husband. I'm teaching her faith and she said okay I want to be and she started bringing presents to my daughter like she's going to be her mama <clears throat> started dressing like me by faith you know she came in in a red suit glory to God honey you can't use faith for my husband I used faith for him but he wasn't married when I was believing for him <laughs> And so we've got to recognize if we're going to believe God, we've got to believe God for what he wants for us because that's what faith is for what he's supplied in his goodness, his grace, his kindness, his favor towards us. And so the very first thing is determine the will of God that pertains to your situation. And I also would like to use it this way, locate it. Locate it. Just, just don't say, well, I, I believe it's God's will that I'm healed. No, tell me where it promises you that we got to locate it. Locate and determine the will of God that pertains to your situation. And so this is going to take time. This is going to take an investment of your attention. It's going to take you being in the Word. You've got to know that this is in your contract. You've got to read the fine print, so to speak. And you've got to locate the will of God that pertains to your situation. It's almost as if you are building a case. Just like a lawyer when they would be trying to represent and to what they're trying to do is say what's legally right in that situation. And they come and they gather their evidence and they say, well, according to this court proceeding and according to this established law and according to this statute and according to this ordinance, and they bring up all of these things that are already established truths, already established laws, already established ordinances, and they say, well, your honor, according to this, it should be judged this way. According to this, it should be granted this way because the law states. And that, that person is supposed to bring what's already established and, and prove that it should go in the way that they are requesting. And when we are coming to a, 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 a circumstance or a situation or an area of our life where we see this is not what is supposed to be in my life. There, is a, there are things that sometimes trespass into your property, into your life that aren't supposed to be there. And you've got to be, take the word of God and you've got to resist those things. And you've got to stand and receive what is. Uh, 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 it's... Um, in your contract, your covenant. So I'm talking about believers and I'm talking about uh, our position in Christ and I'm talking about exercising our authority and all of these things are in the operation of faith. So I've got to know what is the will of God for me. And then I'm going to align myself with that will, but I can't align myself with that will until I locate it. Um, do you mind if I share part of your example from your testimony? When Sister Carrie was experiencing the symptoms that they had not yet recognized what it was attacking her body, and she would go to the emergency room and they, weren't, they were doing the test, trying to locate and trying to determine what it was. And at, at one point when they had determined it, and, and she was at the heart hospital. I was actually on the phone with her. I was in Arkansas uh, ministering in Jonesboro. Pastor Marie was with me. Not Jonesboro, Pine Bluff. And, and we, I was on the phone trying to talk to her. And she said, wait a minute. And all these people came rushing into the room. And they are saying, your alarms are going off. And, and, and this attack against her heart. And when Pastor called 
and asked Jim, said, what scriptures are you standing on? He said, I know she's healed of the Lord. I believe she's the healed of the Lord. But pastor wanted to hear him give scriptural evidence. Show me your evidence. We know that she's healed of the Lord. We know this is an attack. We know this is a violation, a trespass of, uh, on God's property. But in order for you to defend it, your ground, in order for you to defend your rights, you've got to pull scripture. And so that put them on a hunt. And, and Sister, Sister Carrie, she had her Bible there with her by the bed. And she's not only just confessing that she's the healed of the Lord, but she's looking for the evidence. No, I've got my contract with me. Hold on a minute. I got my contract out. And she started pulling out her contract and, and reading the fine print to be able to say no. No, this is not how it's going to go. And when the doctor came to her and said, this is what it's going to be. This is how you're going to have to have this pack on you the rest of your life. And she said, no. He was telling her, that, no, ma'am, you don't understand. If you go on this medicine, you're going to have to have this pack of medicine that's going to inject this. And she said, no. She's not wearing that pack today. And you know what blesses me is that she hasn't stopped reading the fine print of her contract and studying in that because it is, it is vital that we become skilled and that we become strong and, and full faith doesn't come by one hearing. Full faith doesn't come by one hearing. We're not on a knowledge hunt. We're not just on a knowledge hunt. I'm not just trying to find something for me to know something new. I'm trying to uh, attain a fullness of my faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Amen. That word, that verb hearing is in a continual verb tense. Faith does not come from having heard. What you have heard, you've already used that faith. You are not swiping your debit card based on deposits you made two years ago. If you have not made any deposits, you're going to eventually swipe and reach a, 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 a the red. Correct? In order for you to make continual withdrawals, you've got to make continual deposits. And the just live by faith. You're using your faith every day. You're using your faith every day. Whether you realize it or not, your faith is being applied to things. And then when you have specific areas of attack or specific areas that you're reaching for, then your faith has got a greater demand placed on it, which means you need a higher deposit. You need a greater deposit. I heard Kenneth Hagin make this statement. He said that when he was a young minister, he was under, uh, he, he would sit under P.C. Nelson's teaching and he said that Dad Nelson is what he called him. He said he would tell us that when we found books on faith or healing that ministered to us, that, that fed us, that, that energized us, that we should keep those books and read them over and over again. And he said, I have certain books that I have read so many times that I've had to replace the books because I've worn the covers off of them. He said, Christ the Healer was one of those books. He said, I would, he said, I would read Christ the Healer, Smith Wigglesworth, Ever Increasing Faith, uh, uh, Sister Nuzum's books about the life of faith, um, Sister, um, uh, 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 oh, oh, she was a doctor, uh, Lillian B. Yeomans, she has four books. He would read those books. And, and he said, these books I was reading on faith so often, he said, I went for a whole, a number of years where I forgot I had a body. Because he never had problems with his physical body because he was feeding on faith about healing until it was providing that strength to provide the healing. He said, I, I, I just never had a problem. I went for years and never knew I had a body. And, and what we've got to recognize is knowing and believing are not the same thing. Having the knowledge of something and having a fullness of faith about that area is not the same thing. You can know it is right for the husband to love his wife as Christ loved the church and not have a faith about it if you haven't heard it in a while. Because faith doesn't come by knowing. Faith doesn't come by knowing. Faith doesn't come by knowing. Faith is of the heart. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. And faith comes by hearing. And so there are things you're going to have to hear and hear to and hear them again. 
and hear them till you're tired of hearing them, till your flesh says, I don't want to hear this one more time, open up that scripture and read it out loud to yourself again and again. And say, you listen to your flesh, you need this. You need this. And, and so what happens is people become... They get over into a thing that I need something new and I just need to hear something new and hear something new and hear something new and, and, and they want to wow themselves and entertain themselves. The life of faith is not an entertainment. The life of faith is not an entertainment. There was a woman that a, a minister had been taking uh, cassettes of Brother Hagen's to her and, and she would play a new one and then he would come and he, next week he'd bring her a different one. And he said he just didn't see her grabbing a hold of it. And he said, what, he prayed about it and said, Lord, I'm bringing her the answer. I'm bringing her these, these, these preachings, these anointed preachings. And the Lord dealt with him that she doesn't need a new one every week. She needs to, to listen to one till she gets it. And he said, I took her God's word as medicine. And I told her, now, sister, I want you to listen to this, and I want you to listen and listen and listen and listen and listen to it. I heard Bill Winston talking about one specific tape that he had uh, of Charles Capps's, I think it whose was, and he said, I listened to that, and he said, I still listen to it, and there's a certain part, he said, I just go back and play that part over again, because every time I hear it, it blesses me. Every time I hear it, it strengthens me. And so we've got to recognize that when we're eating spiritual food, when we're, especially when we're eating for a specific assignment, if we're... If we're, if we're eating for an increase in a certain area or if we're eating for a breakthrough in a certain area or we're, and I'm talking about spiritual eating, if we're, if we're focusing in, then if there is a specific attack, I need a specific deposit that pertains to that attack. I need to strengthen myself in that area. And, and let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let the Holy Spirit lead you because you may be experiencing physical attack and what the enemy's really using is the fear of that, that thing. And so it might not be healing scriptures, but it might, might need to be victory over fear. Fear-free living scriptures. Amen? And the Holy Spirit will tell you. He will, he will point it out to you. He'll give you that specific emphasis and let you know. He'll help you win this battle. He'll help you win it. He'll help you win it. So the first thing that we've got to do is we've got to locate the will of God. And then when we locate the will of God, we've got to spend enough time in those verses until we have faith to receive them. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. But then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. This book of the law, this word of God, the word law means precepts, teaching. It's not necessarily referring to the Mosaic law. To us, we would recognize this is the, talking about God's word. God's word shall not depart out of our mouth. So in order for us to meditate the word correctly, we're going to have to put it in our mouth. But we're not putting it in our mouth for us to declare it to other people. We're putting it in our mouth to help us keep it in our mind, to keep it dominating our thought life. And so the word in the mouth releases the power of the word. God's word, when it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, it is the spoken word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the spoken word of God, the declared, the uttered word of God. So it, it's not only, it, it's not written in the Bible for our information. It's written in the Bible for our edification. It's written in the Bible to be strength to our spiritual bones, to be nutrition to our, our life, our spirit life. These words are life unto me. It says in Proverbs 4, they are life unto those who find them or who hold them in their possession. Not just locate them once, but I've got to locate it and hold it. I've got to hold that word. Why? Because the enemy comes immediately to steal the word. The stony ground doesn't have a, a depth of the word for it to produce a root system. The thorny ground doesn't have the space or the, the complete uh, freedom for it to grow and it gets choked out. The enemy's after the word. He comes after the word. 
Why? Because it's the word that's going to take you over. It's the word that's going to strengthen you to be all that God has called you to be. It's the word that is your life. These words are life. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. So we've got to not only locate the word, but then we've got to meditate that word until it releases the power of it. You know, if I have... A piece of broccoli. I'm not going to start talking about food that's going to make y'all hungry right here before church, right here before lunchtime, right? If I talked about chocolate cake, everybody would be like, "Why are you talking about chocolate cake right now?" We got to, okay. If I have, a, and there's no nutrition in the chocolate cake anyway. For me to get the nutrition out of that broccoli, I have to chew it. And it had that, the chewing of it begins the process of digestion. Before it goes, if a person doesn't chew it up first, it's harder for it to be digested. Meditating is chewing the word. Meditating is chewing the word. It's chewing it. You know, I used to meditate in first grade. Two times two is four. 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 How much is two times two? Four! Two times two is four. Two times two is four. I meditated my multiplication tables until I got them. I meditated my multiplication tables. We used to meditate our spelling words. Spell them out loud, class. Come on. C-A-T. At. At. We're meditating. What is happening? I'm getting them in my mind. I'm releasing, but with the scripture, with the word of God, because the word of God has supernatural. Every word of God is full of power. Every word, God has no empty words. He's never uttered an empty word. Every word of God is full of power. If you'll chew the word of God, you're releasing that power. You're, you're unlocking the power that's in it by the chewing of it, by the meditating of it, by getting it in your mouth and in your mind and in your mouth and in your mind. And Romans chapter 10 says it this way, the word of faith is nigh you even in your mouth and in your heart. Notice it lists the mouth first. So I need the word in my mouth. I need the word in my mouth. I need the word in my mouth. Why? Because that's how I'm going to unlock the power of it. I'm going to get the digestion, the spiritual digestion process started by the chewing of the Word of God. Not trying to declare it to prove something to somebody else or convince somebody else, but I need it in me. And so this is how he says, meditate. Notice he says, in your mouth, the Word shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate. And the, one of the Hebrew definitions for this word meditate is mutter. You will mutter. And it does include mentally image because what you're, what you're speaking out, you're getting a picture of it. You're getting a picture of it. And so when you see yourself healed, when you got to see yourself healed. And how am I going to see myself healed? I'm going to take healing scriptures and I'm going to put them in my mouth. And I'm going to get them into my heart by chewing them in my mouth until I get them down in the midst of my heart. I'm going to hear them. I'm going to see them. I'm going to chew on them until I have a picture, an image. That's why some people grow old before their time. They hit 40 and they have one of those parties where they say, Lordy, Lordy, somebody just turned 40. And they call it over the hill. I was walking one day and, and through a neighborhood and I, I, somebody evidently turned 40 and they had one of those lordy lordy, Bridget turned 40, and they had grave markers all out throughout her yard. I mean, they had put tombstones all in the front yard and they thought that was funny. But you know what? That puts a mental image in people is that I'm getting old if I'm over, over the hill. Well, God promised me at least 120 years. I'm not even halfway there. I'm not even halfway there. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do you see what mental image that will produce if people start thinking at 40 that they're starting to decline and decrease and getting old and, 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 and all they get up out of the chair and what's happened is they've just sat too long. They've been sitting at their desk too long and had not been walking. They go, oh, I'm getting old. I'm getting, no, you just need to walk. You'll feel better if you just walk. Climb, climb the stairs. You'll feel better. 
But that mental image, they'll start saying things. Like, well, you know I am over the hill. And you know, gave me some glasses because I'm over the hill. And you better than and then, and then they, they start putting their mouth in line with that and they're accepting something that God never designed for them. He never authored that for them. That's how the enemy gets people to go in a direction that the even good, saved, God-loving, Jesus, blood-covered people, lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. No, no, no. I'm not over the hill. I am being renewed day by day. I'm being renewed day by day, the Word of God says. I'm being renewed day by day. And the life that is in me, the spirit life in me, will quicken this mortal body. And so you need to see yourself at 80 years old roller skating. Why not you? Right? I mean, Kenneth Copeland is 80 some odd years old and he's still flying a jet. Woo, glory. Why, why do we have to limit ourselves like that? We don't. But see, the image, the image, the image. The mental image. And so the way you change what you're seeing in your mind, the way that you change that image is by you getting the word in your mouth and begin declaring what the word says until it changes to, it says here, so that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. See yourself. See yourself. Observe to do according to all that is written therein. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the field. Quit seeing yourself lacking. See yourself increasing. See yourself blessed. See yourself over the top. See yourself always going over, never going under. How do you observe to do according to all that is... If people just read that and they say, so that you you are able to keep the word and you don't violate the word. He's, He's more than just about rules and regulations. He's trying to take us into his best. He wants us to see ourselves doing everything he said we could do. Possessing the land. So that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water that brings forth his fruit in his season. And I'm just going to stop right now because I want to tell you that Brother Hagin would go into churches where great revivals had been in the city. He would go into these churches and the pastors would say, William Branham was here. Oral Roberts was here. Amy Simple McPherson was here. I had people in my churches who got healed in those meetings and now they're sick again with the same thing they would got healed of. And Brother Hagin said, well, I'll tell you what's happened. They have received through an anointing, a a working of a gift, through the anointing on that person, a a work of the gift, something that their faith wasn't capable of holding on to. And he would stay in those churches for a couple of weeks and teach the Word of God until he got all those people healed again. But this time they got healed on their faith. This time he said, I want them to come to all these morning sessions and he would just teach and teach and teach the word and teach the word and what they got by the anointing and the enemy had come and deceived them into thinking that they hadn't got it. He said he went into a store. He had a a man who had uh, had his hearing was healed and and, an area in his back had been healed. And he said, I came across him in the post office and he was standing in the post office going, huh? Huh? What? He couldn't hear again. And he said, brother, I thought you got healed in the service. And he said, well, I was just standing there one day and it started coming back on me. And I thought, well, I guess I didn't really get healed. And he said, you got healed. And he said, I I sat there and talked to him for 45 minutes, going over the scripture, taking him back to the word, taking him back to the word. And I got him to receive by the word what he had first received by the anointing. He received by the word what he had first received by the anointing. God wants us healed. 
Every way he can, he's, there are so many ways to get healed. There's laying on of hands. There's the gifts of healings. There's the working of miracles. There's the healing anointing. And then there's receiving it by faith. And sometimes when, when a person receives by the anointing, and they've got to then go to the Word and build and strengthen their faith to maintain and hold on to because the thief comes to steal. The thief comes to steal. So I tell you, if there, whether it's healing or, or an, of any other area where God had brought you into a breakthrough and it seems like that breakthrough has regressed, I'm telling you, don't you be deceived. That's a lie of the enemy. You haven't lost. God hasn't changed his mind. You just now need to take it by the word. You might have received it by the anointing the first time, but you can, it's still yours. Amen. You haven't lost it. Amen. You can get it back. You can just put your hands on it with faith and get back and take the ground back that the enemy seemingly has taken from you. Thank you Lord. Glory to God. God will bring you back up to speed. Amen. He'll put you right back on the path. But you're going to have to do it by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He shall be like a tree. This person who has their delight in the Word, this person who has their delight in the Word of God, will be like a tree, meditating day and night in the Word of God, will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in his season, whose leaf will not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So in that area that you're believing God for, you're going to have to take the time to meditate in the Word in that area. You're going to have to meditate in the Word until it gets strengthened in you, a measure of faith, a fullness of faith. Hallelujah. I'm helping you today. Yes. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We were in prayer meeting this morning. We prayed for utterance. Glory to God that God would speak the answers we needed to hear. Amen. Matthew 7, 25. Oh, we should start in 24. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, hearing and doing, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. You could say that this is a New Testament version of what he said in Psalm chapter 1 and what he said in Joshua chapter 1. It's talking about hearing and doing the Word of God being our foundation. Hearing and doing the Word of God being the establishing of our progress in our life. Founded upon the rock by hearing the words of the Lord and doing those words. We also see the same evidenced in Luke chapter 6. Hallelujah. 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 I'm on the victory side. I'm on the victory side. Luke chapter 6 verse 47. Whoso comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep. That's what you're doing when you're meditating in the Word of God. You're digging deep. You're digging deep. I heard Rick Renner talk about that first church he built over in Russia. And he said that uh, the, the, the hardest part was the foundation. He said it took him, uh, it was like a million dollar foundation. He said it was, it was the, the foundation because of the ground there in Russia, it was like a sod and a, a peat moss, and he said we had to lay such a deep foundation, it cost, uh, it cost him a lot of money, and I think he, uh, it was like $100,000 or a million dollars, just the foundation, and he said, when I got done with the foundation, I just walked around and just looked at this foundation, and he said, later after we built the building on it, nobody else could see the foundation, but I knew what went into that foundation. And I knew what it took for us to be able to bring all of that here into this environment and to establish this foundation. And a lot of times people don't see the foundation that you're building. 
They don't see you building the foundation. They'll come at you and they'll say, wow, what a, a, a great result you have. You know, wow, look what happened. Look what you've got. But they don't know there was a time of the foundation being laid. It was alone with my Bible, quoting the word to myself, just speaking the word out loud and, and laying that foundation. Glory to God. This digging deep, digging deep. We, the, the higher the building goes, the deeper the foundation needs to be. John Osteen, he called the person who had built his building and he said, I want to add a third story onto our church. And he said, Pastor Osteen, you cannot have a third story. He said, I am the pastor. I, I can tell you, I'm, I want a third story on my church. Don't tell me I can. He said, I'm the builder and I know the foundation that I laid. And your foundation will not support a third story. And so God is the builder. He is our builder. He knows the foundation that we need. Digging deep is by hearing the word and doing the word. And speaking it is part of the doing. Declaring it, meditating it is part of the doing. How am I going to see myself to do it? By starting out with the meditating of it establishing this in my heart. So these, in order for you to have the faith to receive it, Brother Caps used to say there were two stages. He said in the confession, what hinders people sometimes is that they're making the faith confession, they're making the declaration, they're saying what the Word said about them, and that first part of it is to get a fullness of faith. When your faith gets full, then it's going to come out and move that mountain. But it's out of the fullness of the faith. A, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. If you don't have it in abundance in your heart, then you can't bring it forth yet. And so part of the speaking it is to fill your heart with it. Is to get it in fullness in your heart. And there's no drive-by for this. There's, you can't just drive through. There's no download where you can just download the faith and just say, okay, God, I'm going to plug in, and while I'm asleep, you just download all the faith I'm going to need. <laughs> and then you wake up in the morning, and then boom, ding, ding, it shows, you know, your download is complete. Yeah. No, th this is the download. Yes. Yes. Whosoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, you will show me I am like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. I am like the man who dig deep and laid a foundation. And I'm speaking it to myself and I'm, I'm chewing on the word of God and until it is building an inner image in me and supplying a strength of faith in my heart. The second thing that we want to do in the process of faith is then we go when we have this determined will of God and we have, the, we have located the evidences and the scriptural case for what we're believing for. The second thing is we want to make specific requests before the Lord. We're going to make specific requests before the Lord. The first scripture I want to show you concerning this is John 16. John 16, 23. Hallelujah. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. So the asking is required. God knows what things you have need of before you ask, but He still requires the asking. Because the asking is a legal uh, transaction in the spirit realm. The asking is a, a spiritual transaction of your faith. Just the same way that if you are going to go in and purchase something, you have to make a transaction. You can't leave the store with that milk and bread until you have made a transaction. And you give what that, fa what that bread and that milk requires for you to take it out of the store. Well, it's all ours by faith. We're not paying for any of that, but there is a faith transaction that's necessary. There's a faith transaction. Well, I'm not, I don't have to pay for it. It's mine. It's freely given to me. But my faith is the, the means by which I receive from God. God isn't moved by need. Have you found that out yet? 
If God was moved by need, there'd be no starving people on the planet. God isn't moved by need. He placed in his system faith as the transaction. And he's given us his faith. And we don't even have to pay for our faith, but it does take the investment of our time to build our faith. And so the asking is where that faith is released in a legal transaction to lay hold of what belongs to you. You know, let me use, instead of a transaction, instead of a purchase transaction, let me use a different transaction, okay? If I go to my bank, Brother Charles, that's my money in the bank. I'm not paying to get my money that's mine, but I do have to legally withdraw it. I can't go in there and, and, and threaten to beat them up if they don't give it to me. That is a federal offense. Right? And that is my money. But I still have a transaction that is required for me to withdraw it correctly. And I've either got to come in there with my identification and fill out a withdrawal slip. I've got to come in with a check that has the account number on it and my signature on it. And I've got to provide the correct identification. It's mine already. The healing is ours already. The blessing is ours already. The peace is ours already. The strength in our marriage is ours already. Those things that are promised us. We've already found the scripture that evidenced it's mine. But now I've got to make a transaction, a legal transaction to withdraw from my account what is mine. I think that's a little bit better than a payment transaction, right? Because it's all, these are, we're talking about things that already are ours. By the will of God. He's already promised them. He's already put it in his, his word to us, in the contract. This belongs to you. This pertains to you. So how do I withdraw it? How do I withdraw it? Faith is the withdrawal slip. The asking in faith. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asks, receives. And he that seeks, finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. That's emphatic. That's sure. Ask, and you shall receive. Say that out loud. Ask, Ask. and you shall receive. you shall receive. Jesus promised it. He said it. Listen, if you ask, you shall receive. We must develop a confidence in our faith. And that requires us to be accurate in our, in our praying. 1 John 5 says this is the confidence that we have in Him if we ask anything. According to His will, He hears us. And we know if He hears us, we have. Can you say you're that confident? Don't shake your head. Don't lift your hands. Just think about it for a moment. <laughs> Think about it. Are you that confident in your prayers? Are you that confident in your prayers that if you ask anything according to His will, if you ask anything and you've already got the will of God, you see in the Word of God that belongs to you, if you ask that, do you have the confidence that you have it? The confidence comes by these scriptures that we're reading right now. We've got to build the confidence. We've got to come to the Word and we say, Jesus said, if I ask, I'll receive. Jesus said, if I seek, I will find. Jesus, you said, when I knock, it shall be open unto me. You said, if I ask the Father anything in your name, he will give it to me. We're developing a confidence. The power, that confidence is in the chewing of those scriptures. You've got to chew those scriptures right there. And you know what's going to come out when you chew those scriptures? Confidence in your asking. Amen. Confidence. Ask, I will receive. We, he wants us to come away from every prayer confident that we have received, not wondering, am I going to get it? Not wondering, do I have it? He wants us to come away from, the, the, if we're effective in our praying, if we're praying in faith, we're walking away with it. Not seeing it, not feeling it, not with physical evidence that I have it, but we're walking away with it. I have it. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Glory to God. Thank you. You, get on, you, you believe it when you get on Amazon and you order from your Amazon account. I have it. Well, it's not here, but I have it. Yes. 
I've paid for it. It's in, I've made the transaction. It is now in my name on the UPS truck, in the box, coming to me. It's mine. You call and you order a pizza. Why am I talking about food again? <laughs> and that is your pizza. It is in Domino's or Pizza Hut's oven, but it is your pizza. You've already paid and made the transaction for that pizza, but it's not in your house, and it's not in your hand, and it's not on your plate, but it's yours, and it's coming. It will be here. Just go ahead and get the plates out. Get those paper plates out, set them out. Get those napkins ready. The pizza's in mine. I've already transacted it. I've asked for it. I've ordered it. And the ordering is the receiving. The ordering is the taking possession of it. If it's late, you know what you call and you say, where is my pizza? <laughs> not your pizza. It's, not, it's, it's, it's already mine. It's, it was mine the moment you put it in the oven. The moment you put my green peppers and olives on that pizza. It was mine. Where is my pizza? You, you not call and say, Domino's, I want to know where is your pizza that you promised to give me. No, <laughs> it's mine. Now, those are natural examples, but we should be more confident in prayer because we're coming with the eternal word of God. And we're basing our prayer, we're basing our request, our asking, our petition on something that God, that is forever settled in heaven. It's established in heaven. It is forever settled. The word of God, he said, it won't return to me empty. It'll accomplish what I send it to do. He wants you to have that same confidence when you send the word. And so in Matthew 7, ask and it shall be given unto you. Everyone that asks receives. He wants you to have that confidence. Let's look also at Mark 11. And I think I'm going to have to finish this this evening because I have like five more steps. Five more pointers. Mark 11. Let's look at 23. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive. The word receive in this verse means take, seize, or lay hold of. Believe that you lay hold of it and you will have it. Believe that you lay hold of it and you will have it. What things soever you desire when you pray. Now he's telling us how to use faith in prayer. Believe that you take them. Take it. Take it. Receive it. Lay hold of it. Believe that you lay hold of it and you shall have. So in other words, you have to believe you receive it when you pray. Just like you believe that pizza belongs to you even though it's still in Pizza Hut's oven. You believe it's yours. You believe that those shoes or the whatever you ordered online are yours, even though they're still in the warehouse of the Amazon Fulfillment Center. That's mine. I've made the transaction for it. I've placed the order. The transaction has been made. It is now mine. Even though it's not in my possession yet, I still have it. I still lay hold of it. I still take it. Amen? Amen. That's what we have to do in prayer. If you believe, you come to the Lord and say, Father, I make a specific request for healing in my body. I lay hold of it. I take it. I receive it. Now from this moment on, I have it. Now here's where the good fight of faith is that you've got to stay in that place of faith of believing I have it. Amen. What do you need for that? You need a receipt. You need a receipt. If you're believing for something, and this is an exercise, that, uh, something specific that you know I need to make this request for, write down the day you make that prayer, that you took hold of it. 
Because if you're calling for the pizza, you say, I called at 11.15, or I called at, at, at 7.20, and I placed the order. You have the time. You have the specifics. Mark it down. Mark it down for your own faith, for your own faith, so that when your mind starts fighting you or your symptoms or situations or circumstances or whatever is coming against telling you you don't have it, no, 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 listen, I'll tell you when I got it. I'll tell you when I got it. I got it the day I believed I received I had it. I believe I, believe I had it is when I, I, I believed I received it. I had it then. I took hold of it then. I, I took it into my possession then. Brother Hagen was on his deathbed. He had been in bed for over a year, about a year and a half. And he had been going, he had got saved. He uh, was going through the Bible. He first of all came to Matthew chapter 6. He got, said, I got stuck at Matthew chapter 6 because I had told the Lord when I first started reading the New Testament, whatever I see in the Bible, I'm going to, to believe it and I'm going to submit to it. And he got over to Matthew chapter 6 and it said, take no thought for your, for your life. Don't worry. Don't. And then he said it had a little thing in the center column reference that said, take no anxious thought. And he thought, how can I not take thought for my life? And at that time, he was, of course, paralyzed. Half of his body was paralyzed. And, and he said it would take him like... a. a 45 minutes to turn the page on the Bible if his grandmother or mother wasn't in the room to turn the page for him. He, he was experiencing episodes where his heart would stop and it would not beat for a, a few moments. And so he would reach back and grab the, the uh, bars on the bed, the posts of the bed, until he had worn the varnish off those posts. And he said, how can I not worry about my life? I'm every day facing death. Every day I, I, my heart is stopping. And I'm having to grab the post of my bed to hold on to my life. How can I not worry about my life? And he said he got stuck there for a while until he finally, he, he said, I went back to it and I told the Lord, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I, I am not going to fear and I am not going to worry and so he said the next time he made that commitment to the Lord, he prayed and he cast the care of it onto the Lord. And he, he, from that moment, he dealt with the worry and the fear because God had to deal with the worry before he could get him to a place of faith. He dealt with that and he said when that heart would stop and he, by natural habit, would just reach back, he said he would say, Nope, I know where I'm going if I die. I'm not going to fear that. I'm not going to fear that. I'm not going to worry about it. And, and he would, he stopped the worry. He continued over till he got to Mark 11. And he's there in Mark 11 and he got stuck in this verse. And he said the Holy Spirit was just keeping, he had no teaching, he had no CDs or he had no radio preachers. The people who were preaching at that time, nobody was preaching what you're hearing today. He had nobody to tell him. He didn't even know if it was God's will for him to live based on what preachers would tell him. He said he got over here to Mark chapter 11 and he's in verse 23 and he had been meditating on this scripture and he said he would wake up in the middle of the night and, and he would be awake and of course he's half paralyzed and so he's there alone in his bed and he's meditating on this scripture. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, if any man believes that whatsoever he says... Speak to that mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but believes that whatsoever he saith, he shall have whatsoever he saith. And he said, Lord, if you stood by my bed tonight and told me I'm not believing, I'd tell you you're lying. I'm believing. And the Lord responded to him and he said, you're believing with everything you know. And he took him back to this verse and he showed him something that was what he was lacking in the receiving of his faith. And it was in the taking. He said he read it again. When the next morning when he was up reading the Bible, he, he's reading it again. It says, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire 
When you pray, believe that you receive. When you pray, believe that you receive, and you shall have. And he said, he got it. He said, the Lord, you're telling me I have to believe that I received my healing while my heart is still stopping. You're telling me I have to believe that I received my healing of my blood while my blood is still orange and still weak. You're telling me I have to believe that I receive it while all the symptoms, while I'm still paralyzed, I have to believe that I receive, that I am healed while I'm paralyzed. And he said, exactly. And he said, he started calling it. He started saying, I am healed. I am healed. And he started calling himself healed. I, my, and he would speak to those specific areas and he would call them healed and he would say, I am healed. And then one day, the Lord asked him, if you're healed, why are you doing in the bed? He was still paralyzed. But he had built his faith. Now listen, he didn't just jump up one day and do this. He strengthened his faith, and his faith until every step of the way, the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit knew when his faith was ready for him to take this next step and, and asked him. But he, until then, he had to say, I believe I have it now, and I thank you, Lord. And I've only heard this in, in some of his earlier teachings because I, I have like this whole big 32 gig of his preaching. I only heard this in some of this earlier. He said, some months later after he got healed, that some of those symptoms started coming back on his body and he would find himself having to go back to bed because his heart, he, he was you know, weak and, and experiencing those heart symptoms. And he, he asked the Lord, what is going wrong? And he said, you're not saying it. And he had to go back to saying it like he had been saying it. I am healed while the symptoms were still there. When he had meditated on those symptoms or meditated on those promises in spite of the symptoms and said, I am the healed of the Lord. I am healed of this heart disease and I thank you for it. I thank you, Lord, I am healed. My heart is strong. I thank you, Lord, I am healed in my blood. My blood is strong. I thank, and he's giving God thanks and he's strengthening self by saying he has it. And his believing that he has received it. Notice it says, believe that you have received and you shall have. You've got to believe that you have received it before the having takes place. Did you see that in that verse 24? Believe that you have received. Believe that you take it. Believe that you lay hold of it. Believe that pizza in the oven belongs to you. You shall have it. You shall have it. Believe that you take possession of it before the having. And as he had meditated on it and his faith had grown concerning that and the Lord asked him, if you are healed, what are you still doing in bed? He was still paralyzed when he grabbed the bedpost and threw his body off the bed. He is hanging from the bedpost. He said, my legs hit the ground kerplunk like two, two, core, two, two logs hitting the ground. And he said it was after he had taken that step that pins and needles... He said it hurt so bad and felt so good because he hadn't been able to feel anything. And now all of this feeling, it's like, you know, if you've been sitting on your foot and your foot goes to sleep and yeah, yeah, it hurts so bad, but it felt so good to him. And he said the, it was like oil that came all down his head and throughout his body and the healing manifested. He was still experiencing weakness. He was still 82 pounds. His, he went back to school and his teacher said they didn't think he would live through the class, you know. How can he make it up the stairs? And they, even, they were so afraid that he was going to die in their class because he looked so bad. Now see, if we don't have that full knowledge, we'll think, well, he just got healed and he jumped up full and robust. And No, he still walked out that healing. The, the manifestation began and the par paralysis was removed, but he still had to walk out the strengthening of his body and the, the walking out of the healing. He said his principal pulled him into the office and said, the teachers are afraid that you're going to pass out in class and they're afraid. So listen, if you don't feel like coming to school, we won't count you absent. And if you don't feel like, you know, uh, if you're late 
uh, because it takes you so long to make it up the stairs, we won't count you late. And if you need to step out and get a drink of water or something because you know you feel like you're about to pass out, we, you don't even have to ask for an excuse. Well, he said right then he knew. I cannot be late, I cannot miss school, and I cannot step out of the class because I'm not going to give the enemy any room to make me doubt. So he still had the faith working. He was still holding on to those promises as that healing continued until it brought into its fullness. I'm helping somebody today. The Lord is helping us today, isn't he? It's the Lord. He's helping us today. Pastor has taught us about our measure of faith. And that the Holy Spirit won't lead us out beyond our measure of faith. And we've got to know our measure of faith. And if what we're facing needs a higher measure of faith to bring to it. Sometimes we experience, here in the corporate setting, our corporate faith moving together in a situation. And then when you get back into your own life throughout the week, you think, well, it was so easy to believe that on Sunday. <laughs> because there was a corporate faith here. You were, you were experiencing everybody else believing with you for that. But he has a, 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 that Time for us to bring our faith up and to strengthen our faith into that specific area. When we came out of debt, when we first started, our faith was under the bottom where coming out of debt was concerned. But as we continually just built our faith and took those scriptures, he brings out those which are bound by chains. We built our scripture about God blessing us and increasing us. Our faith level grew our strength in that believing grew to, to match what the need was. To, to bring the correct amount of faith against to, of that transaction, of receiving that. That's why there are times that you're believing for something that's beyond you. Don't slow down. Spend more time in the word of God to bring your faith up to match what you're believing for. You know, Kenneth Copeland started believing God for fuel in his station wagon. And now today he believes for the fuel in their vehicles, their, their airplanes, for the staff that he has in the different countries uh, that their offices are for the television broadcast, for the BVOVN, but it started with faith for the gas tank of his station wagon. Same faith. He just stayed with it and kept bringing his faith up to match what God was asking him to do. Charles Capps made this statement, and I wrote it down, and I continually refer back to it because it has helped me so much. He said, faith is of the same value as the thing hoped for. Faith is of the same value as the thing hoped for. Faith gives substance to the things you're hoping for. Hebrews 11.1, 1, the Knox translation says, Faith gives substance. Faith gives the substance to the things you're hoping for. Hope is what you're wanting to withdraw. Faith is the transaction equal to withdraw that. Hope is the picture. Hope is the mental image. Hope is the blueprint. Faith gives substance to the blueprint. It builds the blueprint. If you're taking the word of God to build your marriage, you get a hope, a mental image of what your marriage should look like from the word of God. And then you let the word of God producing faith in your heart to be able to love your wife like Christ loved the church. To be able to, wives, for you to submit to your husbands. You, that comes by faith. 
faith will motivate us. Faith will give us the strength to do it. Faith will give us the, the, correct, the correct direction to do what is necessary in that relationship so that we can have the marriage made in heaven. Whatever specific area you are in the process of framing your world by God's word in. This is how it works. We find the will of God. We strengthen ourselves to that will of God is, is so strong in our understanding, in our spirit. We build those verses into our spirit. And then we come and we make that transaction, that specific request to the Lord. Ask and you shall receive. And then you've got to believe that you receive when you ask. Believe that you have received when you ask. And this is where the prayer of faith is different from every other prayer. I no longer need to ask for it again. I received it and I wrote it down so that I could remember the day and the hour that I asked. I have my receipt. That's why I know that Dr. Savell wrote a book. Jerry Savell wrote a book about the petition of faith. If you go on YouTube, you can find his videos where he's taught about the petition of prayer, um, the prayer of petition, I'm sorry, the prayer of petition. And he talked about how he would take these scriptures and he would build his case and he would write it out in a prayer form. Just like they did in Acts chapter 4, when they prayed that prayer, they went and got scriptures from the book of Psalms and, and Old Testament scriptures, and they said, Lord, behold their threatenings. They're pulling out scriptures. This prayer of petition is based on the evidences of your word, and then I make this peti specific petition before God. And he said he would sign it, and he had his wife sign it. And that, that specific petition was something that they would hold on to. And that they would come back before the Lord and say, Lord, we made this petition and so thank you that we believe we've received. And he said he got into a place where he was building a, a, a ministry a court headquarters and, and a hospital actually is what he was building over in Africa and he was experiencing a lot of difficulty and financial setbacks and, and all kinds of different things and the Lord brought to his remembrance how he used to pray the prayer petition. And he said, it's been a long time since I prayed the prayer petition. And he said, I took that night to my staff meeting where we were meeting about this difficulty we were having in Africa. And he said, I wrote out my scriptures. I got my case. I wrote it out in a petition form and I brought it and we all prayed it. And we, made, we all signed it and made copies of it. And he said, within the 24 hours, that situation had the breakthrough that he needed and, and the money that came in and it came in right after the time they'd prayed that prayer. But it's not just the writing down, it's the setting this as a legal transaction before the Lord. That I am receiving, just like my withdrawal from my bank, I'm not asking something of them that they don't want to give me, it's something that's already been stored up and it's mine. We're coming to the Lord and we're receiving from Him what He wants us to have. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet tonight, this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to the Lord. I want you to take the revelation and the understanding that the Holy Spirit has brought to us today. Say this with me. Father, Father I, receive I receive your strength. Your strength. In my, in my spirit, I receive, I receive your, light your light on my path. On my path. I, receive I receive the leading, the, leading, the, inward, witness the inward witness of your Holy Spirit. Of your Holy spirit. I, acknowledge I acknowledge you. I submit to you. I, submit to you. I will follow you. I will follow you. you will lead me, you will lead me in, paths in paths of righteousness. You deliver me from temptation, from, temptation, from, evil, from evil, and I, and I will, experience will experience your very best, your very best in, my in my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Some of you need to take some things back. You've received some things by the anointing. And the enemy's tried to take it from you by circumstances, by feelings, by situations. You need to take it back by faith. You received it by the anointing the first time, but you need to take it back by faith. Faith will keep it. Faith will keep it. Faith will keep it in possession. Take it. Take it. Just take it back. Just take it back. Take back your marriage. Take it back. Take back that financial place that the enemy's tried to move you away from. That place of blessing. Take it back. It's yours. God wants you to have it. He wants you to move into it. Take back your health. It's yours. Jesus died to give it to you. He took the stripes on his back to give it to you. It's yours. Your account is full of it. Just withdraw it. Just withdraw it. Just make that transaction. Just believe it and receive it. It is that easy. It is that easy. Jesus did the hard part. He did the hard part to make it ours. Receive it. Take, lay hold of it. Bring it into your possession. I believe I have it now. And then you stand that. Come back tonight. Let me tell you what to do after that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's declare the vision of our church together before we close. Hallelujah. We'll be back tonight at 6 o'clock. The vision of this church will always be to build people's faith and to frame their world by the Word of God. And you and I will always be world changers.